Okefenokee Swamp. What a wonderful place this is. Down in the southern part of Georgia right now, you know, the Okefenokee will cover nearly all of southern Georgia and laps over into Florida. It's quite a place. I tried to go in there in 1938, but I couldn't get anybody to go in with me. Way back in the old days, the natives thought the place was really haunted. And it was hard to get a native anywhere in there real deep. This chap that's with me is born and raised right around Okefenokee. He knows it pretty well, but none of those boys that's even raised there will get too deep into this country. It's beautiful, wild, and dangerous. Many, many years ago, they tried to drain it so they could get the big cypress out, but they were never able to do it. You have islands in this swamp that cover many acres that are floating islands with full-grown trees on them. These trails were cut in there many years ago, and they wind around. We get a little farther in, he goes pretty fast with this motor, and boy, what a thrill it is, making these sharp turns like that, and sometimes I wonder if he's going to continue right on up through the timber. But I didn't say anything. I just gritted my teeth and grabbed the hold and hung on. There's all kinds of game in this swamp, plenty of deer, bear, worlds of alligators, and of course, the snakes. And one thing about Okefenokee, if you go in there fishing, you gotta get a permit to go in, and you got to be out by sundown. There's a big old gator right there. Man. And a man that don't know the swamp and goes in by himself, why? He doesn't want to leave those trails and try to go back in there, because, brother, you can get turned around, and somebody's got to start looking for you. And you've got plenty of fish in there, plenty of fish. Bass, mudfish, crappie, brim. And what I'm going after right now is mudfish. They call them grinnel or a bowfin. That's the name of them. I'm using a plastic worm catch these fish. I get right on the bottom and fish it very, very slow. I don't know of anybody that's ever made a picture of catching both in before. They're wonderful fish. They're no good for eating. I, I say they're no good for eating, but some people do eat them around the swamp. But boy, they're dynamite. They're wonderful fish. When these both ends are spawning, they'll get in close to shore and in very, very shallow water. And fishing with a plug, it's dynamite, mister. When you drop a plug in there and he hits it, he really kills it. And he'll just tear a plug all to pieces. There's a both fin that weighs around 10 pounds. Now, that's a mighty big fish. So if the bass are not biting, get right down on the bottom, folks, and you can catch yourself some bullfin and have a lot of fun, lots of excitement. Then don't put your finger in his mouth. If you do, he'll probably give you a little tear because they've got some really small, sharp teeth. They say this fish goes way back to prehistoric days. And the dorsal fin on these run the full length of the back and it's very soft and flexible. It's very easy to find there's several entrance to come into this swamp. It's controlled by the state and the government. That fish is taken off, you see that? When these fish, either a bass or a bullfin or any of them, picks up a plastic worm, you can feel him pick it up, but let him go. Let him go and count up to about 10 or 12. Then pick up your slack and then hit him. Nine times out of 10, you can hook him. There's 
millions of birds in the swamp. You can hear noises of all kinds at all times. It's a very fascinating place. I'm only using about, well, I'd say, six pound test on these fish, monofilament on a spinning outfit, with a plastic worm and a single hook. As you swing around through there on these trails, you ever do, just take a notice on each side of the number of wild flowers that you can see. Plenty of gators. So get down there, folks. Bring the family. There's plenty of places to park and plenty of places for trailers. Go down and enjoy a trip in the Okapanoki Swamp. Northwest part of Tennessee. Now, folks, I want you to look at this boat. The only place in the world you'll ever find this boat is on Real Foot Lake. It was designed for this lake for one purpose. It has a very heavy keel, cable at both ends, and the prop is protected by steel. This boat, you can go right over a log or a stump or anything. This lake was formed in 1811 by an earthquake. When this happened, the Mississippi River ran upstream, they say, for 36 hours. It's not a deep lake. It'll average around 6 to 10 to 12 feet, and that's all. And the entire lake, most all of it, is covered with cypress trees, like you see right there. Everywhere you move, there's nothing but beauty all the way through this and a fabulous lake for bass fishing and brim fishing. To some people, brim is a sunfish. See that oar, how you're working it? You're watching. First fish I caught was a sunfish. He flops in the boat. <laughs> It's great brim fishing. When the brim are on the beds down there, people from all over the country come down there to catch brim. And they run up to a pound or two pounds. And when you're going along in this boat, like that open water right there, you head out. You may hit a stump at any time, but it doesn't make any difference. This boat will go right over it. Now, that little stuff looks like moss, but it isn't. It's seed from the moss. It was in bloom when we were there, and it will not sink. And it floats up in close to shore when the wind blows and keeps it up there. And sometime it'll pile up as high as one to two inches thick. And believe it or not, a little later on, it'll just be covered everywhere. When the ducks start to come back from the north, in a less than three to four weeks, they'll clean up every bit of these seeds, every bit of it, just as clean as a whistle. When you look at the cypress tree like the one you see right there, they have a tremendous root system spreading way out all through there, and what a wonderful place for a bass to get under there and hide. When they're biting good, you drop a bug or a plug up next to that root of that tree, you'll always look for a strike. A guide says he wants a fish. He says, I'm going to take a mess of fish home. Well, he sure did. This old gentleman's been on that lake for 60 years, and brother, he sure knows it. He knows, I think he knows every cypress tree in the lake. The fishing is excellent in Rio Foot. It really is. It's perfectly marvelous. If you ever go down there and fish, you'll want to come back. 
and also good crappie fishing in this lake and good sized bass. Like everybody said down there, it's a natural spawning ground. It's a, almost call it a hatchery. What I'm doing now, dropping a bug up on top of that seed. Now, that, the bug does not go even hit the water. Lays right on top of that seed and just work it along slowly. And don't you ever kid yourself, that bass can see that bug right through that stuff. See how it looks like a mush? And that seed is very yellow. Sometimes when you get in there, when there's not much wind and the seed's coming up fast, maybe there'd be an acre of it. Looked like wall to wall coverting. I was very lucky, too. Your bats were moving pretty good when I was there. All the time we were there, you could hear the wood duck whistle. Where is the wood duck in there? And a great place for the gosh hawk, the big hawk. Well, you see a lot of those. And the water is awfully clear. It's a good clear water. That's one nice thing about it. These few fish that I caught will run up to two and a half to three pounds. As you move around the lake, you'll see lots of duck blinds. And I say this is one of the finest lake in the south for duck hunting. There's some more of those yellow seeds up there. It seemed that the fish were lying right along the edge of this thing. And right up in it. Now watch as you see a strike right in there. There it is, right there. Boy, he really hit that hard and took off. Boy, he really did. He sucked it. Really sucked. They got him around, come out on this side of that bush, and in the moss he goes. I had an awful time getting him out of that moss. He got down in there, and I had an off time. I had to pull the boat over, start digging to pull him through that heavy moss. And I finally got a hold of his lip. And take a look at this, man. That's what I had a hold of, mister. About a six and a half pound big mouth bass. What a beauty. That's the reason why he hit us, a doggone hardy. Come right up through that seed and hit that thing. That's a poppin' bug size one off. Now, that's the type of fish you can catch in this lake. You know, this is a great place for family fishing. You got some wonderful places to stay. You got a great big playground. The state has put a big playground in there for children. So get down to Real Foot Lake. Bring the family on and enjoy some good brim fishing, bass fishing. It's a wonderful place to go. You won't forget it.